Hey everyone, in two of my previous videos I talked about uniform flow and source and sink flow, which are two elementary flows. In this video, we're going to combine the two. So we have the two elementary flows, uniform, source, and sink, and since Laplace's equation is linear, then the sum of solutions is still a solution. So we can say that phi of uniform and source and sink is equal to phi uniform plus phi sink, and this will still satisfy Laplace's equation. So we can just write the velocity potential phi of uniform and source, uh, as the sum of the individual velocity potentials from the uniform and the source and sink. So here we have the, the velocity potential from the uniform, which is V infinity cosine alpha times x plus V infinity sine alpha times y plus the velocity potential from the source and sink flow, which is lambda over 2 pi times natural log of r. And we can then write in terms of the velocities uh, that we had already solved for from the previous two videos. So we can write the x and the y component of velocities as vx sub u for uniform plus vx sub s for uh, source and sink. And so this is uh, vx u, v infinity cosine alpha, plus the vx from the uh, source and sink. Similarly, vy is equal to vy of uniform plus vy of source slash sink. And that's here, the v infinity sine alpha, that's vy u plus this term here for vy source and sink. Now let's look at the code I've written for this uniform flow plus source or sink flow. This is pretty much just a combination of the uniform flow code and the source sink flow code. Again, the code you're looking at here is in Python, but I have a MATLAB version as well, and links to my website or GitHub can be found in the video description. And here again, note that you'll need the compute circulation function in the same folder in order to run this. In the known section, we now need to provide both the free stream magnitude and direction, so that's V infinity and alpha, along with the source or sink strength, that's lambda, and the location of that source or sink, uh, which is x0 and y0. Uh, we're using a 50 by 50 grid here, uh, which goes from negative 10 to 10 in both the x and y directions, which again is just arbitrary. And then down here, we're going to solve for the velocities on every grid point by looping over the i and j indices. So for every grid point, we have the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. Then we have the x-distance from the source of the sink, which is dx, or the y-distance, which is dy. Then we compute the uh, total distance from the source of the sink, so that's r. And then down here, we have vx and vy, which includes the uniform flow, that's the first term, and then the source or sink flow in the second term for both the x and the y velocities. Then we have the circulation computation along with the printing of that circulation value to the console over here. Again, it's not really important for this because we expect the circulation to be zero, but it'll be important for the vortex flow. And then finally down here we have the plotting. Now in the other cases, in the uniform flow and the source sync flow, I didn't use streamlines because it didn't really matter, but in this case, uh, it's interesting to look at the streamline. So we define some of the streamline parameters here, and then we're going to plot the quiver plot, which is just the velocity vector plot, along with the streamlines to show how it changes with changing parameters up in our knowns. So based off of these values here, let's just run the code, and a figure will pop up when it finishes running. And here we see uh, the blue outline is for the circulation computation, so ignore that. But if you look at the quiver plot, you can see these arrows are pointing in the uh, direction to the right in the positive x-axis. And then we have the source located at the origin. It's a source because uh, lambda is positive, and so it's located at 0, 0. And when you plot the streamlines, which are coming in from the left and flowing to the right, you can see that at the top or bottom of this plot, they're sort of horizontal, but then right here at the origin near the, uh, or sorry, near the y-axis is equal to zero. They flow into the right, and then they sort of get pushed out by the source and flow around it. So we can see how the source strength has an influence on this. We think that if we increase the value of lambda, it'll push these streamlines out farther. So let's test that out by changing this to five, perhaps, and running this code again. And now you can see that the source strength has increased, and so as we expected, it pushed those streamlines out farther. And this might sort of look like the front of an airfoil, for instance, and that's sort of what we're getting at when we're creating these more complex flows by combining different uh, velocity potentials together. Now this is a simple one, it's a single uniform flow plus a single source, but you can imagine that we can start to create sort of shapes uh, by adding different velocity potentials together. You can also see after we've run this here that the circulation again is nearly zero as we would expect because there's no vortex in this flow. Uh, we've just 
plotted this for positive values of lambda, which are sources. Let's just see what happens if we have a sink. So we'll just do something like negative 2, for instance. And here's the uh, uniform flow plus a sink. And so we have the streamlines coming in from the left. And you can see that the sink sort of pulls the streamlines in towards it. So again, you can sort of see that this looks sort of like a trailing edge of an airfoil, perhaps. Uh, and that's leading towards the motivation for our source panel method. So this video showed how we could combine two elementary flows together and solve for the velocity at discrete grid points. The next step would be to combine the uniform flow with a vortex flow, which will allow us to finally put that circulation computation to good use. Thanks for watching.